Welcome back everybody, my name is Taylor Martin. This is The Best MEDC, and today we're revisiting an old video. A video that I made two or three years ago, top 10 knives under $100. And the reason we're revisiting it is because the landscape has changed so much. So much so that I think making a top 10 knives under $100 video is almost impossible. Like it's, it's not feasible because there are so many options. So we're gonna frame this one a little bit different. Last time I had some friends, Talon, Jeremy, Blade HQ, send their picks and then I had some and I actually asked you guys and had a poll and I, I crowdsourced the top 10 list. This time, these are just my favorites, so they may not be the best for you, but these are what I think are the best value and the best knives that you can get under $100. So with that said, let's do the damn thing. Just a quick note before we get started, I wanna know what your top 10 knives under $100 are. Before I start this list, before you watch it, let me know down below what your top 10 favorite knives under 100 are, and then come back and watch the video. Cause I, I wanna see what your unadulterated opinion is on the top 10 knives under 100, because there are a lot. And I'd love to know if I overlook something that I should have put on this list. So let me know down below. All right, so here is uh, just, I'm gonna list off some of the, the knives that were in this video. I don't know, let me see if I can look up the date. 2020, so it's been three years, November 2020, two and a half years since we did this video. Uh, the Given, just I said a given knife, was a Civivi Elementum S35VN. The community picks, so the knives you guys chose was the Giant Mouse Ace Iona, Spyderco Para 3 Lightweight, Ferrum Forge Falcon, which was my pick, Ferrum Forge Stinger, also my pick, Boker Plus Vox 3.5, my pick, Tops Knives Mini Scandi, my pick, Jeremy picked the Kaiser Vanguard Sheepdog, and then Zach, it was actually Zach Whitmore, he chose the Vox Knives Vox Baby Core. I have put together a list of what I think are the best knives under $100 now the ones that speak to me the most and the reason the landscape has changed is some of these knives are no longer under a hundred dollars there's also been a race to the bottom that's that's the other thing like there are so many companies now that didn't even exist or hadn't really gotten started in 2020 uh petrified fish i had only heard about them somewhat recently there's honey badger knives cjrb kaiser has started a race to the bottom they've got the vanguard series which they were in the old list, but they've, you know, a lot has changed. There are so many knives now. So Vivi comes out with knives almost every single month. There are so many knives to choose from, and there's so much overlap that choosing 10 under 100 is very difficult. So rather than saying these are the definitive 10 best, I chose the ones that speak to me the most, that have ridiculous value, feel and look more expensive, and just appeal to me. So they may not appeal to you, but these are my 10 favorite. But the first one we're going to start with comes from a good friend of mine, somebody who all of you know, Ben Peterson of NAFS. This is the Lander, and it's the one with Sandovic Steel, the 14C 28N blade. Of course, green micarta, because you know me. But this knife, like when it first came, I'm like, that's kind of small. And it still is. Uh, that's probably my only complaint about this knife is that it, it is pretty small. But it's still good, it still finds pocket time. I really, truly enjoy this knife. The best thing about this knife, other than the action, I mean, the action, the lockup, the detent, it's all really good, but I think the best thing about this knife is what Ben has done with the scales. They are open source, so you can 3D print your own scales if you want, but also you can hot swap them, so you just take out these two screws, remove the clip and take out those two screws. You can take off the scales, put the other scales together, and you're not messing with the action or anything with the knife. The knife stays together, scales come off, new ones go on. It's great, it's brilliant. He's not the only person who's doing that, but I think he is the only person who's open sourced scales. So if you have a 3D printer and you got some like glow in the dark uh, filament, you can make your own glow in the dark scales for a knife's or a NAF's lander. Um, I, I just think it's a really, really good knife. I've said it before, I think it really reminds me of like a Rat 2, but it looks a lot better than a Rat 2 and it feels a lot better and it's built better. So for me, this one is a really, really great knife. Makes the cut, top 10 knives under 100. And that again is the NAF's Lander. The next knife on the list, it's one that's kind of flown under the radar for me. A lot of you have been talking about it and apparently it's been very, very popular, but I've been <laughs> off doing my own thing for a few months and I'm trying to just 
reassociate myself with some things in the EDC world. And this is one of the knives that had just flew under my radar. This is the CJRB Pyrite. Obviously I have the full stainless version. So you have stainless steel blade, stainless steel handles. It also comes in G10. And in hindsight, after handling someone else's that has G10 handles, I kind of wish I'd gone with that one. I purchased this myself. The handles on this, super slick. So one of the reasons it jumped out at me and I liked it so much is that it reminds me of the Quiet Carry Drift. Obviously it's a little bit narrower, but it looks a lot like the Drift in many ways, but uh, it's slick. Like I don't have that issue with the, the Drift, but this thing just feels super polished and it feels very, very slick in the hand. So the other thing about this knife is it comes with a newer blade seal that you may not be familiar with. It's, I think, proprietary to uh, CJRB, and that is AR RPM9 blade steel. It's somewhat similar to 9CR18 MOV. Some other people say it's similar to VG10. The complaints on this one were that it's that people are having trouble deburring it, that it's really soft when sharpening. I can't really corroborate that one way or another. I've not had the knife a super long time, but also when you're talking about fairly budget knives, 100 and under, and this one being $50 and under, something has to give, and usually, not always, but usually that's gonna be the blade steel. So you have to go into a knife like this, understanding that it is a knife that will be used and abused. The steel will have to be sharpened more frequently. So the only problem therein would be if the blade doesn't really hold an edge long at all. But if it's on par with 9 CR18 MOV or VG10, I, I'm not gonna complain about that. Like I'm, I'm totally okay with that. You have to understand that something has to give and if it's the blade on a budget knife, I'd rather have really secure lockup, great action, something that feels great in the hand and is usable but it might have to be sharpened more often. So for me, no complaints. For me, the only other thing to note about this is that this one has a tiny bit of lock stick. You might be able to hear that, but it's really not that bad at all. I like it, I like it a lot, and it will probably see pocket time moving forward, if I'm gonna be completely honest. I like this thing. That is the CJRB Pyrite. All right, so this is kind of a twofer, but not really. The next knife is the Kaiser Assassin XL. The reason I mentioned the smaller version is because this knife is really the knife that sparked the idea for this video. I have carried the crap out of this knife. However, I purchased the larger version for this video because I'd always felt like I would love this knife if it were a little bit larger, but there's also an issue with the Assassin, not the XL, just the original version. I was opening some packages for my son's birthday just last month. And what happened is I grabbed this knife, like this right here, cut the zip tie, and when the zip tie popped, this disengaged. See that? I can disengage it because I'm gripping the knife really hard and it pushes that plunge. So the first thing I noticed when carrying this knife is that that plunge lock, the button for this lock, sticks out past the scale a pretty good bit too. Uh, if you look at the larger version next to it, it looks like they've remedied it a little bit. It sticks in a little bit further, or this one juts out further. I should say. And then if you look at say the pyrite, which is also a button lock, these two are about the same. This one sticks out further. It's marginal, but it's notable. And what that means is that you can grab this knife and push that button with your hand, which that's not ideal. That's not good. And fortunately it's never cut me or anything, but it's something that has steered me away from the smaller version. Instead for this video, I have purchased the Kaiser Assassin XL. It's all the same that you get with the original, but just bigger. You don't have that glaring flaw. And I like this one better. There's in every single way, I like the XL better. So you still get 154 CM blade steel, deep carry pocket clip, button lock, micarta scales. I like this thing a whole, whole lot. Um, I love it. I really don't have any complaints about this knife at all. I think this is a ridiculously good knife for $90. And the final thing I will say about the Assassin XL is that this is probably in my top three on this whole list. I freaking love this knife. The next knife on the list, as you've noticed so far, I've I've done my best not to just make this a list of Civivi knives. However, they have a sub-brand called Sincut, which I don't hear people talk about very much, but Sincut's supposed to be like the budget of Civivi, but they ended up just kind of being Civivi knives without the C branding. <laughs> That's pretty much it. So this one is the Sincut Tynan, and I, I just was browsing budget knives. That's all I was doing. And I came across this one and I was like, wow, that, that looks sick. You've got a total stonewash finish. 
the entire knife has stone washed except for just a few pieces of hardware and i love that monochromatic look just all one color it looks gnarly uh and it's 47 dollars, so it's under 50 bucks you're getting a uh 10 cr15 co mov steel i don't know much about that at all i'm going to be completely honest i don't know anything about this blade steel um, but i've carried and used this knife a little bit and i I got no complaints. I obviously don't know how that blade still will hold up, but as I said with the pyrite, as long as it takes an edge and holds it for a decent amount of time, I can strop it daily. I can use a ceramic rod on it to just kind of hone it a little bit. If you do regular maintenance, any of these budget steels should be fine. That being said, everything else about it, and, I, and I'm not saying the blade steel is bad. I'm just saying I don't really know anything about it. Everything else about this thing is damn near perfect, especially for under $50. Uh, everything you expect from Civivi, but I personally like this more than most Civivi knives I've had because it's just, it, let's be honest, okay? This thing reminds me of two much, much, much more expensive knives. One of my all-time favorite knives, the uh, Shirogorov Neon, this one's the Neon NL, but the Neon Zero is actually a closer comparison because it doesn't have the micarta might as well grab the right knife if we're going to make that comparison so we have the sin cut tynan they have the sugar of neon zero and then the giant mouse a sonoma uh all very similar knives right like just all gray all titanium and these two this one's steel but like we're talking 550 to 700 dollars we're talking like 150 to two or 300 i don't even know what the a sonoma cost i bought it second hand or $47. So if you're looking for something like these, this thing is awesome. Like checks all the boxes for me. I mean, it's it's the Neon Zero for me. Uh, it's just a budget sheer sure, of Neon Zero, right? There are a lot of differences, but like for all intents and purposes, this is a knife that I'm gonna carry, use and beat to hell and not care about. And that's what this list is all about. This thing is awesome. And this again is the Sincut Tynan. All right, talking about another uh, alternative to a more expensive knife that I've been known to carry. We have, I mean, might as well get it out. The Pena X Series XL Trapper versus the Boker Plus Bonfire. This is like $300, 280 or so. This is $85. And there are a lot of differences. This isn't like a total knockoff or ripoff or anything. We're talking about an old pattern knife that people have just adapted. And you're going to get a lot of similarities when people take an old traditional pattern and apply modern technology to it. So I'm not saying Boker is copying here, so to speak, but you've got a very similar handle profile. The blades are very different. You have a bolster lock versus a liner lock. So there are differences. And let's be honest, if we're gonna talk about comparisons here, the clip on this thing is atrocious compared to the milled clip on this. But this is just another one of those great examples of a cheaper version of a knife that I carry and love. Well, with that said, what you're getting with this is a D2 blade. So some people don't like D2. You're paying $85 for a D2 blade. Some people are gonna have a problem with that. Now, I'm not gonna complain about D2 for being D2. I am gonna complain about D2 because I don't typically like carrying D2 because I rust the crap out of it every single time. So I don't have a problem with D2 other than the fact that I rust it. So I tend to not carry it in the summer, winter, less of an issue. The other complaint that I have really is how, how squared off everything is. So the, the scales aren't bad but up here in your bolster, it's kind of not sharp, but it's it's got a corner to it. But the liner, you can feel it back here too. These liners are not, they're not chamfered or anything like that. They're just straight cut and it's very harsh. Uh, and that's the only real problem I have with it. And that there's no cutout at all for it being a liner lock. Um, it's just kind of hard to get your finger in there, but the action and everything is good. You're getting something that to my knowledge, uh, until this came out, Really your only option for a good modern traditional, like a true modern traditional was something that was in the $300 range. If I'm wrong about that, let me know because I would love to know about other knives that are like this modern traditional style. I love these knives. Uh, but for me, seeing this at $85, it was a no brainer, insta buy. I like it uh, and it is big. I have no problems with that. My favorite Pena was that XL. So this is the Boker Plus Bonfire. And it's pretty sick. I had the original Kaiser Feist when it came out. I was sent a Kaiser Feist by Urban EDC Supply not long after I started the channel. And I thought it was a great knife. The thing I didn't like about it is that it only came in, I believe, a Warncliffe and a Reverse Tonto blade. And I didn't really love that. 
and when doing research for this video i realized i didn't even know until doing this a couple weeks ago that this knife existed this is the kaiser feist so it's a hundred dollars 99.98 so it technically qualifies for this list it's a drop point and it comes with rich light handles red rich light handles like that's awesome this thing is great for a hundred dollars and you have a cpm 4v steel blade it is a very 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 nice steel for a knife to be a hundred dollars uh it is a small knife that's probably the only thing i would change about it is make it just a hair bigger because it feels it feels smaller than the original feist and i think that's just from the different blade shape i don't know it's been probably two years since I've handled one of the original Feists. I just love how clean this knife is. I like the rich light and the clip again, probably my only complaint, but this clip feels a lot more substantial than that bonfire clip. But Justin Lundquist is a phenomenal designer. He comes up with some really clean designs. The Feist has been a long standing great knife. And the fact that there's one under a hundred dollars with this blade steel, all of this together in one package under 100 bucks is pretty ludicrous. That's really all I have to say about that. You guys are probably pretty familiar with the Feist, but there you have it. This is a drop point Feist in rich light for 100 bucks. Pretty damn good. This next knife, I'm not going to dwell on it too long because I have talked about it in the past. It was on my last video. It's still on the list because it's just a ridiculously good knife for the price. This is the Ferrum Forge Stinger. I had one of these that I purchased myself and I sold it. And then I decided to make this video. So I had to get another one. Actually, Blade HQ sent this one to me. Um, so yeah, I had to get another one for the video though because it's such a good knife for the money. These come with a Nitro V blade. So I don't know how you feel about Nitro V. I have no problems with it. Although I do rust it, just not as bad as D2. It's very small. The ergonomics as is with anything from Ferrum Forge are freaking perfect. The only complaint I have ever had about the Ferrum Forge Stinger is this little blade notch. So you have a flipper. You don't ever have to touch the blade notch if you don't want to. You had to use your fingernail to flip it open. But if you didn't and you accidentally used like the pad of your finger, it would actually like maybe it was a strong detent or just the way that notch was, it would like tear your finger from your fingernail. It sucked. So you never saw me like spidey flicking that knife, but it worked, but you can thumb flick it as well. I, I just think this is a phenomenal knife for $95. And again, one of the reasons I feel that way is it is extremely similar to one of my all time favorite knives, the Shirogov Neon Zero. They're about the exact same size, very similar blade profile. The difference being that you've got a choil, very similar on paper, uh, obviously difference being, <laughs> the price and some of the materials, but in terms of like functional EDC knife, they check all the same boxes. So there you have it, the Ferrum Forge Stinger. I'm gonna jump out of order really quickly because, uh, and these are not in any particular order, but I, I just have to talk about this because I just talked about the Stinger. The next knife is actually the knife that I have in my pocket today. This is the Bob Terzula ATCF Lite. And on paper, it is extremely similar to the Ferrum Forge Stinger. So both of these knives, if I'm not mistaken, are made by Wee Knife. They are white labeled, so you don't see any Wee branding. So you have Ferrum Forge on the pivot here. You have Bob Tuzula's logo there, but I'm pretty sure they're, they're just Wee Knives white labeled. I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure. You've got like all the same construction here for these, the same liners, you have the same scales, G10, you've got that same finger groove on the blade, uh, flipper tab, very similar pocket clips. Like these are very similar knives. The difference being, the main difference being obviously shape, but also the length. With that said, the ATCF light, what you get with this is again, Nitro V steel. You have an overall length of 6.9 inches, a blade length of three inches, and the weight is still 2.8 ounces. I love this knife. Like this has taken over as the knife I'm gonna recommend under $100 for most people. The only complaint for me really comes down to size. I wish this knife, I keep grabbing this and putting it aside. I wish this ATCF light were the same size as the Stinger, but given the choice between the two, I would probably go with the ATCF light. And the main reason is I, I just like the way it fits in the hand and I like the way it looks a little more, to be completely honest. Um, this is like a smaller version of the ATCF that came out with ProTech last year and it's just a more budget friendly option. And I told you, I had it in my pocket. I've got two of them. So Blade HQ sent this one and Bob himself sent this one. They didn't know. They they actually both arrived within like a day or two of one another. <laughs> so uh, 
neither one of them knew they were both sending the same knife, but this thing has been a mainstay in my pocket since it arrived. It's just a great knife. Price on them is 99.95. So it's basically a hundred dollars, but it's under a hundred dollars. So it's on the list. And I think it is one of the best options on the list period. However, it's a toss up for my favorite. I haven't talked about my favorite yet. This one is a toss up with that. So, I mean, it's, it's really hard to say. Oh, and the one thing that I just kind of learned, didn't even realize. Uh, so you got a flipper tab, you have the same finger notch, right? It's a little bigger than the, the Ferrum Forge, but it can also be front flipped very easily. Uh, I don't know if that was intentional. I imagine it was, but the jimping for the knife is also, uh, it also allows you to front flip. But that, that's it. That's all I have to say. And once more, this is the Bob Terzula ATCF Lite. Oh, and it comes in a ton of different colors. So if you don't like the green or the tan, there's black blades, there's black handles, there's all sorts of different colors. This thing's really cool. So the ninth or the next to last knife on this list comes from Kershaw. And I've never really talked about Kershaw on this channel before. And I think it's because they've never really hit the right budgets, right? Like I feel like they've always been in that 20 to $30 budget. And then once you get to $50, most of the time, you can find a better knife for the money. But truthfully, I feel like Kershaw has been stepping up a lot in, in the last maybe year or two. And this is a perfect example of that. Um, there's also another Axis style lock from them that I was gonna include in the video, but I had to choose. And it came down to the Iridium. This knife looks great. I love that slate gray aluminum handle with that like bronzed backspacer. I love that. That looks really good. This is a $65 knife. You get D2 blade steel, which again, not everybody's gonna love personally. I'm not a huge fan of D2. I don't mind it, but in the summer, I just can't touch the stuff. So for me, that's really the only negative mark for this knife. So the bug out, why it was so great when it came out is that it was a great price. I think it was 115 or $130 when it first came out. They're now 180 plus. There are bug outs that are 200, some of them I think are $300. I don't know if there's a gold series, but some of those bug outs get expensive. This knife is $65 and checks pretty much all the same boxes. It's very lightweight, the action's good, it's centered, there's no blade play, like everything here is good. The only complaint that I can see some people having, myself included, is D2, which I don't mind it. I'll carry it, just not in the summer. <laughs> um, I mean, there's very little to complain about with this knife. I think this is a really, really good offering at $65. Um, honestly surprised me by Kershaw and the fit and finish is really good from Kershaw. So this is the Iridium and a very surprising entry for me on this list. I did not plan to include Kershaw, but here we are the Iridium. I really like it. All right. The last knife on this list, I'm just going to go out and say it straight out. I hate to say it. This is my favorite knife. If it's not this one, it's the ATCF Lite, but this right here, the Civivi Sokoke is badass for $65. This knife looks and feels and operates like a knife that is worth much more. Uh, I have no complaints with this knife except the pocket clip. So uh, I posted not too long ago, a couple days ago over the weekend, I guess, that I bent the absolute crap out of this pocket clip. And I think if it were just a little bit shorter, it wouldn't have been so bad, but I have twisted this up. It's mangled. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but this clip has seen better days. Um, Savivi said they'd send me some spare clips, but uh, I freaking love this knife. I've carried this knife a ton, uh, probably more than any other here. The Sokoke is awesome. So this comes from Ray Laconico who is a master of uber clean designs. This is no different. It feels very bushcrafty, but it also reminds me a lot of one of my favorite knives. I've said that a few times here. That's probably the theme for this whole video. So the knife that this one really reminds me of a lot is my 520. I freaking love this knife. Grab it fairly often. Uh, it's just like the overall shape. The fact that they're front flippers, obviously they have different blade shapes. This one's a, a true drop point. This one's more of like a spear point that tip kind of swoops down a little more, uh, but they've got very similar handles. They feel similar in the hand. I, I love it. So the 520 is in my top 10 knives of all time. I 
freaking love this knife. The Sokoke is a much cheaper version of something very, very similar. And other people that I've handed this knife to, in fact, Alex behind the camera, when I got this knife in, I told you to guess the price of the knife. And I think you said 200 and some dollars. I think the only giveaway was the Civivi logo, right? Like, I don't even know if you looked at that, but everybody thinks that this is a much more expensive knife. It feels like it, looks like it, handles like it. The only complaint about this knife at all is that pocket clip, which I'm gonna swap out. I'd like to put a milled clip on it if I can find one. I know that I've seen people put milled clips on Civivis, um, but I've carried this knife a lot and I will continue to carry it. And it looks like that screw's running out. It is. Aha. Uh -huh. Glad I caught that. Civivi saves the day again. I love this little thing. <laughs> All right, so one last time, this is the Civivi Sokoke from Ray Laconico. So basically, if we were to narrow this list of 10 down to three knives, it would be these three right here. It's really, truly a toss up for me between the Sokoke and the ATCF Lite. They're both really good and I've carried them interchangeably, like some days, most days, honestly, both of these in my pocket because I really, really, truly like them. And the Assassin XL, the reason I gave more time to these is because I've carried the Assassin so much, um, I knew that I was gonna like the Assassin XL, but yeah, these three will remain in my rotation because I truly like these knives a lot. It's crazy now, it's truly crazy. These things didn't exist just three years ago when I made this video last time. Most of these knives didn't exist, some of them did, but most of them didn't. And the thing is, I've only talked about 10 and there are hundreds. It's crazy, it's awesome. It's a great time to be in the EDC world. Like the stuff that's happening, it's overwhelming at times too, because you can't keep up with everything. There's no physical possible way to keep up with all of it, but you can buy them and enjoy it, which is really, really cool. These things are sweet. Go check them out. Everything I talked about in this list will be linked down below. Many of those links are affiliates. If you wanna support what I'm doing here and you decide to purchase something, if you use those links, it will give me a little bit of a kickback. And sometimes there's even a discount code applied. So thank you guys if you ever use those links. You can also go to patreon.com forward slash bestmedc if you wanna support there, but that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. And until then, carry on.